So as you can see, so we have a uh, low budget setup here at HeroQuest Fans. Uh, what we're going to be doing is a live unboxing of HeroQuest game system from 1990. I don't want anyone to be confused about this. This is not official. This is not sponsored or endorsed by anyone but me. Uh, this is strictly amateur fan-based uh, unboxing of a board game that I happen to own. Um, this is uh, kind of a first run, dry run, dress rehearsal, if you will, for a future unboxing of a very similar game. So here we go. Um, and if I misspeak in anything, I'll try to correct myself, but hopefully the uh, visuals will speak for themselves. Anyway, we've got HeroQuest game system from 1990. This is the North American or US release. And it was a gift originally, so I don't know how much it was when it first came to the market, but you could buy it in regular stores. You didn't have to go to a special game shop to get it. Uh, it was probably about 20, 25 bucks, including tax. Now you can get these online, uh, typically on eBay for around $170 if you, whether you get it complete, quote unquote complete, or you assemble the parts uh, together. And of course you may pay more with the shipping. So anyway, here's the box and I'll just kind of show you. You can kind of measure it out. So we got about, um, let's see, use the uh, imperial system here. So maybe like 20 and a quarter inches and like 12 and a half inches. Anyway, it's a big size box. And as you can see, the artwork, this is based on Les Edwards. Um, and it says uh, ages 10 to adult, two to five players, Milton Bradley, owned by Hasbro. Um, and then if you look at the rest of the box, I'm just going to open up the box here and show you. Now, keep in mind, this is a beat up old antique. And this is not, I mean, all the original components that were in the box originally are not here. This is assembled from different sets that I've acquired. But if we open up the box and we just look at the contents here. Now, this bag obviously wasn't there originally. This is the inside lid looks like. So it has assembly instructions. And so if we were to look at the assembly instructions in close up, you can see that it kind of shows you how to put the, uh, the game together. Because originally it wouldn't have been assembled. Uh, you've got furniture, which piece, parts of it are made from cardboard, parts of it are plastic, You've got miniatures that are plastic. Um, you've got tiles. You've got all kinds of stuff. But originally you would have had sheets that you had to punch the tiles out and then you'd throw the scraps away. And you would have had to punch out pieces of the furniture and you would have had the pieces of plastic are on what they call sprues. So let me just show you an example. This is not part of the original set, but a sprue is this plastic model kind of stuff, this here. And so you would have had to twist, carefully twist off or use a scissors or a hobby knife to like cut those pieces clear. And then you throw all that away. So after you've assembled your set, then you're ready to play. But let me show you what's in the box. So now you got a big mess of stuff here. So this bag obviously is just a Ziploc bag. There's tiles in here. These tiles would have originally been punched out of the sheets. They're just made of cardboard here, you can see. Do the close up. So there's just little cardboard tiles. It's almost like chipboard and they have kind of a shiny finish. Now different editions of the game had different qualities about them, but this is the set that, that we had in North America. You got cards. Now, obviously, the cards wouldn't have been in these fancy sleeves. The sleeves are modern, but there's cards. It's 
furniture. So you've got the plastic component and you've got the cardboard component. So another example. And you had to assemble it. So these little rats, for example, got attached. No glue required. You just kind of put them in. Now, some of the pieces from the set I'm going to show you are painted. These were obviously painted by fans. Uh, originally, they would have been unpainted. So let's take a look here. So we got a mess of things. We've got tiles, cards, we've got dice, wooden dice, miniatures, plastic miniatures. So let's take a look at some of the things. And we've got some small inner boxes that you can take out. So I've got one small inner box, just pretty plain. You can use these to roll dice in. Another inner box. All these cards, which we'll just set aside for now. Now there's one or two things missing from here. You got this nice cardboard uh, board, I guess you could call it. And it shows the armory, what they call the armory, where you could buy weapons with your gold. The whole point of Hero Quest is you're, you've got your four heroes and they're going on adventures together. And they fight monsters, which they do by rolling dice. Um, they search for things, they draw cards. They move around the board, and then in between quests, they use the gold that they found to buy items. And all you do is you just write it down on your little character sheet. Now, there's all these symbols that you had to know. There's a little bit of a learning curve to the game. Um, all these symbols that show you like what is represented here. So the sorcerer's table is represented by that symbol. So um, the game master, or the, the person who controls all the bad guys, who is the fifth player, because you've got four players who are heroes, or one player could control up to four heroes. Um, uh, the fifth player is called Zargon, and he's the game master. He runs everything. He controls the bad guys. He tells you what what is on the secret map. So he's looking at a secret map, and he sees all these symbols, and so he would be the one to interpret them. So that helps you out there. Set that aside. Now you've got the hero cards. Obviously, they wouldn't have been in these plastic sleeves. These were added later. But you got those. They're like little boards. These would have been punched out as well. You've got your character sheets. So you got a pad of these character sheets. A lot of them have been used. Originally, it would have been probably 80 sheets, at least 80. I'm not sure if there were 90 or 100, but it's probably around that number. So you write everything down there in pencil. You've got your instruction booklet, and uh, there's some debate over whether that's supposed to be Zargon or Mentor, the good character. Um, but this tells you how to play. It's got all the rules in it. And as you can see, it's pretty short. It's only 23 pages. So really, the Zargon player would read this, and he can just give a quick explanation to the heroes. The quest book. This isn't the original. This is actually a reprinted version because the original was, was lost. But it gives you a little bit of story, shows you some quests. And so just a typical example of a quest. Spoilers. Um, so you've got all these symbols on the board there, and it tells you what everything, where everything is. This gets revealed little by little as the heroes move around square by square. You've got the notes here, which tell the little story. You've got uh, what those symbols mean. So when stuff happens, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, you'll know what to do. And a quest can take anywhere from 20 minutes for the very shortest quests, if you get lucky, all the way up to, let's say, four hours. Now, if you really take your time, it can really drag on. But it's still shorter than Dungeons & Dragons, I've been told. I've been told. So as far as the quest book goes, oh yeah, and then at the end, 
you've got this blank quest map. So there's 14 quests in here, but there's there's a blank one, so you can photocopy this or use graph paper and you can make your own adventures. And there's all the symbols, you could photocopy those and cut them out. Or a lot of us just drew them on notebooks. Now, the distributions here aren't quite accurate. There's actually a slightly different number of pieces than what they show here, but this is just for your convenience. This explains the different monsters in the game. There's an epilogue. So that's the that quest book. And then you've got the what a lot of people call the GM screen or the gamer screen, the Zargon screen. So the Zargon player puts this up in front of his or her spot so that you can't see what's going on, the secrets. It's just cardboard. And this gives some, some quick references about the different monsters and things. So as you can see, that's fairly large and it folds and over time it'll it'll start to kind of fall down. So usually you prop it up with something, but anyway, that's what's in there. We'll just put that over there for now. It's kind of cool with some artwork. And then these boxes get pretty beat up over time. This is the board. So it's a standard size game board. Folds in half. And you can see that it's got um, the HeroQuest logo at the very bottom there. And each of these is a square. Now they're not exactly perfect, but when you put a piece down, you can see that the square kind of fills in where it's supposed to be. So if you measure these, they're about 25 millimeters, but it's not a perfect square. It kind of looks that way, but this is actually a reproduction that I'm holding. This was actually 3D printed in resin. Um, and the only reason I did, I'm showing you these is because this is what the original heroes look like in red, rather than painted, which are the ones I got. But the plastic that are used in the originals is pretty sim similar to the type of like model plastic that you would get in like 1980s, like model kits. Like if you're putting together like a dinosaur or a, a car or a tank or plane or something, it's similar to that type of plastic. It's not super strong. If you bend it, it's gonna leave marks, um, stress fractures, they call it. So anyway, you got the board, fairly large board. And so the orientation is that at the bottom of the board is where uh, the Zargon player would be sitting, like with the Hero Quest logo, and then the other players around him or her. So that's that. And now I'm going to show you the individual components. And this is going to be kind of lengthy and possibly tedious, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. So the four character boards you got here in close up, you've got the barbarian. Now on the reverse side, you can see it tells you kind of a quick reference for what you can do on a turn. So each hero has a turn and then Zargon has a turn is how it works. But every time the heroes trigger something, such as discovering a room, searching for traps or secret doors or treasure, Zargon gets to do something. Um, when a monster is revealed and a hero attacks the monster, the monster gets to defend himself. And that's when you roll your dice for attacking and defending. Now, if a monster attacks a hero, the hero gets to roll dice. So we've got the barbarian, strongest character. You've got the dwarf. Another favorite, he has a special ability of disarming traps. Normally you have to buy a, um, um, a toolkit item in order to disarm traps, but the dwarf gets the ability already from the get-go and his is, has a greater chance of succeeding. Got the elf who has not only the ability to fight, but also has magic. He gets three spells, so three spell cards that he can use. And then last but not least, you've got the wizard. Now these characters can move in any order. You kind of decide beforehand what you're gonna do. The wizard is the weakest character. He has the weakest weapon, the lowest number of body points there, but he has the highest mind points, meaning he gets to use the most spells. He gets to use up to nine spells. Each of the spells only gets to be 
used once in a quest under most circumstances, but still. So you got the magic character, the magic uh, and fighting character, two other just pure fighting characters, but then one who has a special ability. So this is kind of the easy mode and this is the hard mode. So that's that for that. And now if we want to look at the, the back of the box, I'm just going to show you right here what it looks like. Kind of a fun thing. So it's like no other game you've ever played. 14 different quests inside, a new adventure each time you play. So if we look at the board view here, so we've got an example, and clearly they're targeting uh, young boys as the audience, but girls played it too, adults as well as kids. So 35 highly detailed figures, 21 doors with bases, 15 pieces of furniture, parts, tile sheet, game board, character sheets, instruction booklet, quest book, evil sorcerer screen. So whether you want to call him Morkar or Zargon, Morkar is what he was called in the, in the European Union uh, countries. Um, there he is, four character cards or hero cards, those tiles, 66 cards and eight dice. Now, if you look closely at this picture, you can see this is actually the European version they're showing. Some of the components look slightly different, but anyway, it's fun. So we'll flip that over and we'll start looking at the internal components because that's what you really want to see. And if you're doing this on a replay, I don't, I don't uh, blame you if you fast forward or put it on high speed. That's just how things go. So I'm just going to kind of move a few components out of the way so it's a little easier to do this. Strictly low budget. Okay. So looking at the different components here, we've got furniture. So we've got a torture rack. We've got sorcerer's table. Again, these have been painted. Originally they were unpainted. Cupboard, bookcase. Uh, let's see, another bookcase. And so that's about two and a half inches. And then how tall is it? It's less than two inches tall. We've got a fireplace, throne, alchemist bench. Now this has multiple parts to it. It's got a little loose scale, scales. Two tables. So just like there's two bookcases, you got two tables. We've got a weapons rack. You've got a tomb. You've got three small treasure chests. You've got an assortment of doors. Now for the doors, there's two types. There's the closed doors. So you got one, two, three, four, five. So kids can learn how to count by playing this game. And then you've got the open doors. These are a little bit flimsy. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and 16 for the complete set. And then you've got a few spares. Now this bag is obviously extra, but you've got skulls and you've got rats. Now these little things are just decorations that you put on to the different pieces of furniture. The skulls obviously came on the same sprue as some monsters I'm gonna show you that are that same color, that kind of yellowish white. And then the rats, this one's a little broken, are brown, and they uh, are also decorations for different pieces of furniture. 
Now to show you in close up what they, each of them look like, uh, the throne, you can see it's uh, made of some different brown pieces of plastic that are connected and then a piece of cardboard appropriately labeled. No one gets to sit in this, it's just decoration. Most of the furniture is just for decoration. Uh, we've got a table, it's got a little supporting piece of plastic, you can see that. Same with the other table. The alchemist bench, you can see that is obviously painted, and then there's the original. And they tried to glue it, but it didn't quite uh, stay on there. So anyway, that's your choice if you want to do that. You've got the fireplace. He doesn't look too happy. You've got the bookcase with the decorative rat and skull added. You've got the second bookcase. And notice they're not the same. They have a different cardboard illustration. So one's got the little skull on it and a couple little things different. So you can play, play a game and try to spot all the differences for that one. So bookcases. You got the cupboard, not too fancy. There's only one of them, but very similar to the to the others. I mean, these these things just come right out. So I've seen ones where it has like two skulls or two rats, or uh, maybe there's positions are swapped or whatever. You can do whatever you want. Sorcerer's table. These candles get broken a lot. This has actually been repaired. So the Sorcerer's table, weapons rack. This one tends to get broken, at least that spear. It's, this is the only one that's completely plastic. Torture rack. These pieces, of course, come off with some difficulty, and you can kind of rearrange them if you want, unless this guy glued them together actually he might have sorry <laughs> but it does come off normally there's cardboard the tomb pretty simple yet effective originally would have been all gray obviously for the paint treasure chest you can see that little plastic support in there there's three of them And you got your door, your closed door. And you got your open door. The pieces don't actually fit through the open door. It's just symbolic. So Zargon opened the door. He takes it off the board. He puts this one there. That's how it works. And if you run out of doors, you can just take that off and say, fine, it's an open door. I've actually created my own, but that's another story. This is a type of game that does encourage people to create their own stuff, but... I'm just trying to show you what's in the box, just to start with. And if there were any future edition of HeroQuest, then you'd want to know what was in that box, too. Hopefully, it'll be at least what you get this time. That's another story. Okay, so that's that little box. I like to store them like that, but you can use these to roll dice in them or whatever you want. Set that aside. Now we've got another box. And inside here is where I put the miniatures. Now you've got different types of miniatures. You've got monsters. So we've got a Chaos Warlock here. you got a Gargoyle. You've got some Chaos Warriors, specifically four of them. Uh, you've also got some what they call undead monsters. So you've got... Uh, you've got... Uh, Let's see, two mummies, you've got two zombies, and you've got four skeletons. And they make that nice little plastic noise when they bang around. And then you've got what they sometimes call green skins. So you've got femurs, 
specifically you've got three of them there you've got I actually threw an extra one in there I have more than just the regular ones okay so you've got orcs now you've got four of them that have the curved scimitar type sword if I can find them all here you got three with the cleaver type weapon actually no I'm wrong you've got three with the scimitar two with the cleaver two with the flail or morning star type weapon and then you've got one with this notched or curved sword so it's like a special orc so you've got eight orcs total now you've also got these goblins you've got six goblins you've got two of them with hatchets or axes two of them with scimitar type swords and two of them with pointed straight like dagger type blades or short swords I guess if you want to call them that uh, then you've got your heroes in red you got your dwarf barbarian elf and wizard so those are your plastic miniatures and we'll show the close-up well actually yeah we will okay so there's your wizard now in the North American version you don't have that beveled edge but the uh, European version you do have that beveled edge so that's how you can tell the difference between those two editions see how there's no bevel so now when you get to the expansions that all bets are off because I think all of those are beveled but you got the wizard you got the dwarf and these are available in different shades of red you'll find them different different editions of slightly different colors you got the barbarian actually he didn't have his elbow out like that so th this is actually a variation of the original originally his his arms are, are pretty tightly formed into one light column of muscle there and you've got the elf so square bases you've got one type of goblin here pretty fun little guy there another type of goblin with his sword you've got your a couple of goblins got your orcs these are probably the most common type of enemy that you'll face some quests will focus on the undead figures and some will focus on the green skins but usually the orcs are the ones that you encounter there's also something called a wandering monster so if you draw a certain card zargon gets to put a monster out and usually it's an orc and if it's not an orc it's a skeleton that's pretty common later in the game they they throw bigger monsters at you make it more difficult there's the fimmer and of course fans of warhammer fantasy will remember the fimmers and some bigger guys mummy get that autofocus going there's the mummy looks like it's white but it's kind of a yellowish white and of course if your set is really old like mine is uh, the plastic gets a little yellowed anyway I don't mind I kind of like it zombie get that zombie there yep with his big cleaver skeleton with this scythe I like the style of the big heads and big hands but anyway reminiscing here chaos warrior another character from the world of Warhammer fantasy 
that distinctive helmet type thing decoration the gargoyle this is the only one of the miniatures that you actually have to assemble the head comes off and the wings come off some people glue them on i don't mind if uh if the character's taking up too much room you can just pop those wings off so it doesn't take up so much room chaos warlock usually this is the big boss bad guy in the quest like a special character who has special powers but sometimes it'll stand in for a good character as well like let's say there's a mission where you have to rescue somebody this is the person that it's represented by that just use your imagination then you've got dice so you got these wooden dice with these rounded corners these are the original dice you can see they're really beat up originally they would have been nice and white and they have the different symbols on here we've got the the skull which represents a hit you've got the black shield obviously a lot of the blacks come off that represents a monster shield or a, a monster defensive hit there's jokes about it being the immortal bunny of evil uh, or just a walrus or something you've got the white shield like the lion shield obviously that's worn away quite a bit this is a hero defensive block so let's say somebody rolls a skull if when it's your turn to roll if you get a white shield you block it if you're a monster you want one of these to block it so there's six of those the eu version only had four so those are fun and then you've got these red dice these movement dice these aren't the originals these are reproductions because i'm not sure what i did with mine these are slightly smaller like a millimeter smaller than the originals but they're just your standard board game dice gold pips six-sided you know use those to move move your character around the board now monsters have fixed movement but heroes would roll and they can do an action and move or move and do an action so those are the figures put those away so we've got your hero quest miniature figures there and in later expansions you got things like ogres and frozen horrors and things like that next you've got tiles so obviously they wouldn't have been in a bag and i'm hoping that i didn't misplace some of these but this should be more or less what you got originally is you got these tiles so you've got and they're all two-sided except for these the stairway is where you usually start that has black now people have used this as oh it's a pit it's a pit of darkness <laughs> So you've got your double block squares, you've got your single block squares. And on the opposite side of the single block square is uh, something else. So you can see those. Let's see if we've got enough here. Again, cobbled together from multiple sets. So you may be missing some, possibly. piece of dust there so the blocks of course represent walls as you're questing along oops it was so perfect and I goofed it up so 21 of those seems pretty good and then we've got um, a mixture of other things we've got some these represent secret doors that's a reproduction 
I'll throw that one out. Okay. No, we won't throw it out, but it's just not part of this, the box originally. Okay. So there's seven. So I'm guessing that we're missing one. But if we go into close up, you can see from these tiles, they got a little bit of a shiny finish on the underside of the stairs spiral staircase and the double block squares is just black but the rest have something on the other side now in the north american version of the expansions you'll see that a lot of these are one-sided so the other side is just it's just white it's like chipboard so on the other side of the secret door is a pit trap so if you need a pit trap you put that one out if you need the secret door you put that one out so we'll just turn those over there you've got a falling block trap results in a bunch of rubble. So that's another rock pile, a wall. Same there. And then on the other side of these, you've got, okay, skull tiles. Well, what are skull tiles used for? Well, certain monsters have more than one body point. So instead of saying, oh, you attacked him, he rolled his defense, he didn't get it he's dead you take him off the board well if he's got let's say he's got two body points like a femur has he gets damaged well you're supposed to put one of these underneath the figure now sometimes it doesn't work very well to have it underneath so instead of that you'll just uh, like set it next to it but whatever works so let's see how many of those we've got so we've got three There's another pit trap another falling block skull Skull, skull, skull. The most body points of any monster would be three in the game system. So you don't need that many skulls, but maybe you might have a bunch of wounded monsters on the board at a time, or you're using a tile for something else, and so you'll need a skull. So there you go. So you got three, four, five pits, and you got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those falling blocks. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven skulls. So there's probably one missing. But yeah, this reproduction one, I did it so well, I, I almost couldn't tell the difference. Yep. So those are your tiles. Zargon will put those out when the time is right. So the heroes on their turn as an action, because they did a movement and an action, their action can be to search for traps. And in that case, Zargon will just indicate the square, but if the trap gets sprung, like a character lands on it, he'll put out the pit trap or the falling block trap. If you search for secret doors and you find one, according to the map, he'll put out the secret door tile. If you hurt a monster, but don't kill it, he'll put one of these out. And of course, the stairway is where you begin and end most of the quests. Sometimes it's through a doorway, but usually it's the staircase. And you can quit the quest early without completing your mission by going down the stairs. Because if all four heroes die without completing the quest, then it's game over. Zargon wins. Zargon's supposed to make it interesting for everybody, but at the same time, he is trying to kill the heroes. He's the bad guy. Obviously, he's not supposed to cheat. He still has to obey the rules himself. But he does a little bit more than just, you know, like the, the banker in Monopoly. So those are the tiles. So next component we're going to look at here for Hero Quest are the cards, of course. Now, like I said, they wouldn't have been in sleeves. And as you can see, the sleeves that I used are really slippery. So they're flying all over the place. But originally you would have had uh, different types of cards here you'd have um, treasure cards so you get a pile of treasure cards and when you search for treasure and there's no treasure designated in the quest in that room because you only search it in rooms not corridors um, you'll draw a card it's supposed to be shuffled at the beginning of the quest some people like to shuffle them every time you search but you might get treasure so here's jewels. I'll just, uh, I'll get the pile going and I'll show you the different distributions. So there should be 24 treasure cards. So we'll just get them all here. You can watch me sort through these cards, which is very exciting. Not really, but you get the idea. So 
are kind of all mixed mixed around. So you've got your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. 23 treasure cards. There should be a fourth one here. 24. 24 treasure cards. You've got monster cards. Monster cards are just more for reference to show you what each monster has. So here's an orc. The orc can move eight squares. Now on Zargon's turn, he can move any monsters that are revealed on the board. Any or all. They can move eight up to eight squares. They attack with three dice. Attack adjacent hero. Two defend dice whenever they're attacked. Uh, they have only one body point and they have two mind points. Now mind points come in when you're using magic. So that's their resistance to magic. And if a character gets reduced to zero mind points, if something actually attacks their mind points directly, they're considered unconscious and they're taken out of the quest. Later quest backs, they have different rules for mind points, but that's basically how they work in game system, base game, hero quest. So you've got eight monster cards. Four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And you've got artifact cards. Look like this. Artifacts are special treasures. They're called quest treasures in the European version. They're sought after, and about half the quests, I believe, you have to locate an artifact, or finding an artifact is a big deal uh, in that quest. Maybe you can win without it, but it's a lot better if you do. So they have special special effects. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There should actually be nine. I'm actually missing one. I've misplaced one of these cards somewhere. It's called the wizard staff. So it's a special staff that only the wizard can use. So um, anyway, there's supposed to be 10 of those. Now we've got these spells. So magic is a big part of hero quest. It's not just fighting, it's also magic. And magic, it's they're treated kind of like items. Like you've got an item of magic that you use. Use your imagination to figure out how that works. But uh, you will draw the card, or you've got the cards in front of you, I should say. And when you, on your turn, you can use a, a spell instead of attacking. And once it's used up, you turn it over, it's, it's used, it's done, it's gone. And when you start a new quest, you get all your spells back again. Now... You've got chaos spells. There's 12 of them. These are only for the bad guys. These are kind of rare. Um, but certain bad guys have the ability to use magic. And those are usually big fights. Those guys are a big deal. But with the heroic spells, the good guy spells, that either the wizard or the elf can use. Now, the elf can only use a set of three. They're all based on an element, one of the fundamental old elements. So you've got air spells. We got three of those. So the elf could get three air spells in theory, but then he couldn't use any of the others. You got fire spells, three of those. You've got earth spells. These are the most popular ones for the elf because the instructions actually recommend that the elf use these. And I'll say why in a minute. It has to do with healing. Because there's actually a healing spell in there. So if he's about to die, um, the way the European version works is you got to heal yourself before you die. Once you die, that's it. And you're out of the game. Your character is out of the game. In the next quest, maybe a, a new elf comes along or a new wizard comes along. But in the American version, uh, the North American, U.S. version, you can actually, if your character goes to zero body points instead of immediately dying... Um, it's like he's in the process of dying. If he's got a spell that will allow him to heal, or if he's got a potion that will allow him to heal, he just automatically uses it, comes back, because you can't go negative body points. So water spells, there's a healing spell in here, there's a healing spell in here. So usually the elf will pick one of these just to keep himself alive, and then the wizard gets everything else. So there you go, you've got all those. And I will show you each of these cards. So let's see. 3, 6, 9, 12, 24, uh, 36, um, 
six. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, there's there's some cards missing. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, so here we'll just go through each of the cards. So we've got monster cards. So you got Ephemer, Orc, Mummy, Zombie, Chaos Warrior, Gargoyle, Skeleton, Goblin. Now these cards, the it's a little bit distorted just because of the sleeves that I'm using, these protective sleeves. But if you take the cards out, you can see they've kind of, they're not super shiny, but they're not super matte either. It's kind of in between, like a very, very fine, um, I mean, they're old cards, but they're not like bicycle cards that are covered in plastic. They're, I guess they're pretty, pretty typical for board games of like the eighties, let's say not designed for small children. So they're not super glossy. I guess you could call them matte, maybe satin, satin possibly, but anyway, and they're, there's, they're one millimeter taller than your U.S. board game card size. So if you look up U.S. board game card size, it's one millimeter shorter on the top. Don't ask me why, it just is. So it's actually a custom size. I want to say it's 57, 57 by 89 millimeters approximately. So let's look at the hero spells here. We've got earth spells. We've got heal body. Pass through rock. Rock skin. Okay, so you've got extra defense. Now, usually these can either be used on yourself or on another hero that you can see. And C means line of sight, although there's some dispute about that. I think if you can draw a straight line unobstructed from your character to the target, you can do it. Water. You've got sleep. Very effective power. Now... The more mind points a monster has, the more chances he has to counter this. So there's where the mind points come in. Veil of Mist, letting you walk. Now heroes can walk through each other, monsters can walk through each other, but heroes can't walk through monsters unless you're using this. And then you've got Water of Healing. The wizard actually gets the first pick. He can pick one of these colleges if you want to call them one element then the elf gets to choose then the wizard gets the rest that's how it goes and you've got air spells so you've got swift wind doubling movement twice as many red dice genie powerful attack tempest causes a monster to lose his turn and then last but not least, fire spells. These are the, kind of the most popular. They're fun to use. Fire of Wrath. So it does one damage unless they can roll a counter with a red die. Courage. Gives a hero an extra bonus when he attacks, as long as he can see monsters. Ball of Flame. So it's like Fire of Wrath, except it's two body points up to two body points of course they get two chances to reduce the damage then we've got our artifacts it's again special stuff so the elixir of life will bring a dead hero back so it doesn't matter when they got iced they'll come back spirit blade is very effective against undead monsters can't be used by the wizard because it's a sword. The wizard, I forgot to mention, is limited. He can't use, he can use a staff, he can use a dagger, but most of the weapons and armor he can't use. He can use a toolkit as well, but yeah. Wand of Magic, really good for the wizard or elf. Ring of Return. Spell Ring. Wizard's Cloak. Now, the Wizard's Staff card, I've misplaced it, but it looks very similar to this, except the Wizard is holding a glowing staff. 
And so it's, it's like a special version of the staff that only he can use uh, and allows you to roll two combat dice and tack diagonally. So that's pretty cool. Orc's Bane. Short sword can't be used by the wizard. Born's Armor can't be worn by the wizard. This is like plate armor, except uh, it doesn't slow down your movement. There's some debate about what this really is because it doesn't have, it doesn't really give you the power of plate armor and a helmet, but it does give you a lot of defense. So it's like each hero starts out with two defend dice. So if they put on armor, it adds to it. Whereas this just takes your base defense of two and it adds two. It's a little confusing. And then the talisman of lore, which increases your mind points by one when you wear it. In the European version, it's two. So there are rule differences. Okay, now we've got treasure. You've got diff different distributions of treasure. So when you search for treasure and there's no designated quest treasure, you draw one of these cards. And it could be a hazard, could be something bad. So it does one damage. Now you've got actually two of those hazard cards. Normally these would be shuffled. Um, there's another hazard, it's just an arrow hitting you. There's two of those. Here's some good ones. Potion of Defense. And uh, opinions vary, but I, I like to think that you can stack potions. Potions don't use up an action to use, so it can be used anytime. And if you're next to another hero, you can pass them uh, an item. That's what they say in later expansions. In the base game, they don't tell you you can do that, but everybody just assumed you could. So Potion of Defense. Potion of Strength. It's a very similar to Courage, only it's just a one-time thing. Heroic Brew, it's pretty nice, two attacks. Now I'll say do not return this card to the deck after you've used it, but in the next quest you shuffle it back in. Gem, so this will give you 35 gold. Everybody keeps track of their gold as you go with your pencil. It's two of these. Potion of Healing, these are really sought after and important. You'll roll one red die to see how many body points get restored when you use it. So it could be one, could be six, anywhere in between, and you can't go over your maximum, your starting maximum. So if you're a wizard and you're down to one body point, you get you get up to three. So there's actually three potions of healing, I should say. In the European version, the potion of healing automatically gives you four, but these are one red die, or one D6, as gamers like to call them. Here you've got um, this gives you 15 gold coins if you find that one. There's two of those. Fif or, yeah, these are all messed up. There's two 15s and there's two 25s. So, and you could uh, use card counting techniques to decide if it's worth your trouble to search for treasure. Now you don't know what's on the quest map, but According to the rules, every room can be searched by each hero. So the first hero might find the treasure on the map, and then the other three might get cards. That's how it goes. Jewels, you can get 50 gold from that one, two of those. And unfortunately, the rest are wandering monsters. So as you can see, the wandering monster, uh, depending on the quest, Zargon gets to pull out a monster, and it'll attack the one who searched. So the monster gets a free attack. The hero does get to defend, but if he hasn't moved yet, he can still still move. So those are your 24 treasure cards, and that does it for the um, for the cards. So that's the unboxing of the HeroQuest game system. And HeroQuest was released in a lot of different countries. So you had the North American and the European version for the English speaking world, but there was also a Brazilian version that had cardboard um, miniatures instead of plastic for the hero characters. I'm not sure about the furniture, if they had all cardboard furniture or what, but I didn't play that one. Um, Japan had its own version with very different rules and different story and everything. It's really kind of neat. Um, and a lot of other countries, of course, got their own language versions. Most of them were, well, they were either they were either like the North American version or like the European version. But again, then you've got the Japanese version with with different rules entirely. 
So that's HeroQuest. Now I do want to show you something else here. Um, there were a couple of expansions. Actually, there were several different expansions, depending on what territory you were in. North America got uh, four expansions. The EU or the UK got its own set of expansions that were different. But both regions got these two first expansions. So in the EU, they're released in 1989. In uh, North America, they were released in 91. Um, so anyway, I think chronologically, most fans have decided that Keller's Keep comes first, then Return of the Witch Lord. So I'll show you what's in each of these boxes. So just looking at the box, it's got some cool artwork, of course. Once again, Les Edwards, 10 more quests inside. This is not a game in itself. The quest pack is an expansion set for your HeroQuest game system. So you need the game system first, then you buy one of these. And these are probably originally like 10 bucks. Um, so not bad. Nowadays, you probably are gonna spend 50 to 80 bucks on one of these online depending on how you do it. So just looking at the back, so it gives you a little story. The adventure continues. Keller's Keep. Quest book with 10 new adventures, 17 finely detailed monsters, full color cardboard tile sheet. Now there, that picture will show you what those tile sheets look like. So just like with the game system, you get this, you punch it out. You get the uh, monster figures on the sprues, and you have to work those loose, and then you've got the quest book. Now, before I open those up, I'm going to show you the different quest books. Now, these are actually reproductions, but it's just, just to make a point. So you've got Return of the Witch Lord. You open it up. You've got this alchemist shop. So just like the armory in the game system, between quests, you can use your gold to buy stuff. So you can buy the Potion of Restoration, Potion of Dexterity, Potion of Battle, Venom Antidote. And as you can see, it's not a card. So the cards don't limit how many you can get, but you can write, you know, you could buy as many of these as you can afford and just write them all in your character sheet and just cross them off as you use them up. And both, both of these have the same alchemist shop one between quests. But yeah, you open it up very similar to the other quests. Now it'll explain the assembly. You had these special doors. So you pop the old graphics, uh, cardboard graphics out of the door and you pop the new one in. Um, the iron entrance door and the wooden exit door. So that's usually how you begin and end a quest instead of using the staircase. It explains the new tiles. There's tiles that cover entire rooms. There's explains the rules. There's a little bit of a story. Now, Mentor is the guy who gives you your mission, so he's like the good wizard. He's the hero quest equivalent of Gandalf, I suppose. And then um, Morkar, or Zargon, is the uh, Saruman <laughs> uh, equivalent. So you've got, these, you've got these quests, and once again, very similar type of format. Now, at the end, there's no blank quest, but you've already got that from the game system. But look at this. These are new artifacts, but check it out. They're really small. They're smaller than the cards, okay? You know, a card is, is way bigger, standard card. So these are like mini cards, but you were expected to cut them out from the back. So if you buy one of these on eBay, it's usually going to be cut up, cut apart. Um, but they do recommend that if you don't want to cut it up, what you can do is just photocopy it, just like you would those extra maps. Cut them out. So you've got spell scrolls that allows anybody to use magic once. It'll crumble to dust. They're highly prized. So you got Pass Through Rock, Ball of Flame, Fire Wrath, Courage, Heal Body. Then you've got these other things. You've got a magical throwing dagger, rabbit boots. Armband of Healing, that's a really good one. Dust of Disappearance, so there's no Veil of Mist scroll, but the Dust of Disappearance does the same thing. Although, yeah, you can toss it on another hero or yourself. And then the Anti-Poison Quill. 
Now, once you get both of these, you'll see that some of them are duplicated. So if some quests will have, it'll say draw a random spell scroll. So you put all the spell scrolls together and there's more of a chance of getting certain ones if you have them both. So this is Keller's Keep. That was Return of the Witch Lord that we just looked at. Keller's Keep, you got Ball of Flame, Fire of Wrath, Tempest, Sleep. You've got Courage, again, Genie, Rock Skin, and Heal Body, again. And uh, Ball of Flame and Fire of Wrath are repeated, of course. Magical Throwing Dagger, and the Fire Ring. Fire Ring is pretty good against certain bad guy bosses. Magical Throwing Dagger is exactly the same. Now these spells are the same as the, the version that you see on, in the normal hero spells. So Keller's Keep, once again, Alchemist Shop. Talks about the different um, new tiles. Repeats the same kind of rules, because they don't assume that just because you have one, you're going to have the other. But most of us, I think, once we got one, we wanted to get the other. So we got the quests, Wandering Monsters. So each of these has 10 extra quests to add to your 14 that you get in the game system. Pretty good deal. Get your creative juices going. So if we look at the back of Turn of the Witch Lord, it's the front, and we'll look at the back. So once again, tile sheets, you get extra skulls. Why would you need extra skulls? Well, you've got them. And they're all undead figures, just like the other one was all green skin monsters. Quest book with 10 new adventures, 16 finely detailed monsters, only 16 this time. Full color cardboard tile sheet. So the Witch Lord and his mutant army. Okay. So let's open up Keller's Keep. So we got the box here. Now, I just threw this in because my fire ring has been misplaced. So that's the original photocopy that we cut out and just kind of threw it on a regular size card back with the sleeve. But anyway, fire ring. Here's what they look like cut up. So the person I bought these from, I put them in tiny little sleeves. And you can see there they are. Obviously, these Ziploc bags are not in the original. But you've got a complete set of... Oops, these are not, these were not in the original. These are mine that I added later. you got a complete doubling of the green skins. So you've got six more goblins, exact same ones, three more Fimmers, and eight more Orcs. And yes, you do get one more of those notched sword orcs. So you will have quests in there that call for more than the game system would have had. And so you can use your extras. According to the rules in Hero Quest, if you run out of monsters, what are you supposed to do? Well, you can use any, you can substitute any monster of the same color. Now, in later expansions, they say you can substitute monster of a similar strength, which makes sense because they ended up using a lot of blue figures and they greatly varied in strength. Okay, obviously Ziploc bag wasn't in the original, but you've got new tiles. So you've got this barrier, or I should say walkway. You've got a cloud of chaos type thing, or a dark cloud. Cloak of Shadows, whatever you want to call it. you got these stairways, two short stairways, and two longer stairways. Oh yeah, and there's supposed to be ten of these cards. There's ten of these little artifacts. European version didn't have these. Now the European version did have equipment cards, which I forgot to mention were not part of the North American uh, game system. That's because in the North American version, all your equipment is on the armory screen, armory board. You've got these tiles. Now with these tiles, you can see that on the other side, oh look, it's just chipboard and it's thin. 
I guess some of the other versions out there, they were thick and double-sided, but these are definitely not. These are kind of cheaper quality, but they still get the job done. So you've got some more stone, single block squares. That's not one. You've got these two trap doors. Another small stairway. Another small stairway. Got a forge. We got a rolling boulder. That one's a real pain when it happens. Some more stone. Got a couple of pit traps, extras. And then you've got pieces of a map. It's kind of a fun thing. You're supposed to find these pieces of a stone map and put them together. There we go. I can put together a simple puzzle of four pieces. There we go. And then you got these extra doors. So the wooden exit door and the metal or iron entrance door or steel door you just slot that in there like that so ta-da pretty simple from your game system so as you can see if you just bought this you aren't going to be able to play the game you'll need the game system to go with it and then we've got our quest book. And as you can see, this one has had the back cut out because these are all cut out. So it still holds together pretty well. As you can see, there it is. It's got kind of a shiny thing there. Stapled little booklet. So we'll put all this back together. Chances are, once you start playing, everything kind of gets mixed together anyway, but it is easy to tell these components from the game system components. Like I said, these are thinner and white on the back. The miniatures look exactly the same. Good luck figuring those out. <laughs> uh, the cards are obviously a different size. Some people criticized it because, well, you know, it just seems cheaper quality. And the quality of the quests, I mean, ask different people, but the quests are definitely harder. There's a lot more monsters to contend with, a lot of new surprises. You do get the new artifacts, but some people complain that Keller's Keep just wasn't that interesting compared to Return of the Witch Lord. I would tend to agree that Return of the Witch Lord feel, felt a little bit more epic, a little, little tougher. Um, but also a little more rewarding, more interesting. But everybody wants to see the expansions, so there you go. They recommend that you play the game system first before you try these, just because they are more difficult. They require a little more seasoning. Veteran players. So that's Keller's Keep. Turn the Witch Lord, very similar. I'm not going to try to draw it out too much, but once again, you've got the little bitty cards. So I'll just, whoops, show you there. And actually with this one, uh, they, the person I bought it from gave me an extra Tempest. See, Tempest was not included. This is from Color's Keep. So they actually, they threw it in the wrong box. So that one's not even in there originally. But you've got all these others, just like I said before. Just except Tempest is not there. So I've got two Tempests. Originally it would have been Pass Through Rock. So there's my photocopy from back in the day. Obviously this is not included either. But there is a Pass Through Rock. Miniatures. Now there's different distribution of miniatures here. These are undead. So obviously the bag is not original. So this time you've got an additional set of skeletons but check this out 
instead of just four more, you've got eight more. So with your game system, you're going to have 12 total skeletons. So that gives you an idea. You're going to be fighting a lot of these monsters in, in these uh, Return of the Witch Lord quests. And instead of just two more zombies, you've got four more. So you've got double the number of each set. So now you'd have six if you add in the game system. And you've got four mummies, meaning that your total would be at six once again. And as you can see, the bases on these are not beveled. They're just like the other North American bases. Now when you get into the later expansions like um, the Elf Quest Pack and the Barbarian Quest Pack, Mage of the Mirror and Frozen Horror, respectively, that were only released in North America. They're very hard to find, very sought after, and extremely difficult. Some people say even not play tested. I tend to agree with that. Those figures have beveled edges. Don't ask me why, but they do, even though they're exclusive to North America. And the European exclusives like Against the Ogre Horde, and Wizards of Morkar, the Dark Company, all those miniatures are have beveled edges. And they're certainly sought after. So I'm not sure why I'm just throwing it in the box, but um, let's just put those away properly, shall we? So here I am trying to be all neat and tidy, but back in the day we just kind of threw stuff in the box wherever it would fit. I'm sure many of you did too, if you ever played this. So there's the quest book. As you can see, a little bit beat up. Cover's been cut off there. And missing a staple. You got 10 quests in here, just like in Keller's Keep. A little bit of a story addendum. So the Witch Lord is a character that you face in the first 14 quests. But per the title, he comes back. Now with these tiles, you've got a cool thing. You've got a full a full room there. So that's a room replacement. And you've got another one, a revolving room. Very familiar. Type of setup here, you've got your little squares, your single block tiles, single sided of course. as before and you've only got six of them this time but then you've got your extra secret doors so you can tell right away what they are because there's only one side to them two more pit traps you've got a death mist that's actually a character that moves around and you've got these tombs extra tombs let me just move that there so you can see a little better what I'm doing. So, tombs. And as you can see, each of them is different. Okay? They're not all the same. And then, once again, you got the steel and the wooden door exactly the same as, as the other set. Because, again, they don't assume that you've got them both. So, the components here, are they're not mi mixed and matched, but... It is nice to have extra monsters and, of course, these fancy tiles. And as with the game system, this is imagination fodder. You can use this to create your own quests. Throw any of these components you want in there. And after a time, you might start, um, you know, designing your own artwork, photocopying stuff, maybe photoshopping it. Of course, this was the, you know, 1989, 1990, 1991. We didn't have that sophisticated of stuff most of us but now you do and you can go onto websites uh, back in the day it was old scratch was the place to go and then uh, Dwayne Egan's in now it's ye old in and there's some Facebook groups if, if that's your sort of thing and there's Twitter if that's your sort of thing I like ye old in just a bunch of fans so that's turn to the witch lord so you got those two little boxes. As you can see, they're much smaller than the uh, big box. So like nine and a half inches by uh, six and three quarter inches. And then like 
two inches. There you go. So that's been my HeroQuest unboxing 1990 slash 91. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if we uh, have other HeroQuest stuff to unbox in the future, we'll be happy to do that. Just as a kind of a special little bonus here at the end, I'm going to show you one extra thing I showed you at the beginning. These are the sprues. They haven't been removed from the sprues of these mercenaries or men-at-arms. This is actually from uh, the EU version. As you can see, they've got the beveled edge. And these guys have little holes here because you can choose what weapon they have. So you can insert a crossbow, halberd, sword, or hands holding a sword and shield. And these are guys you can hire for a certain amount of gold to follow you around on a mission, kind of as an extra guy. They're pretty weak, but um, several different components use these. So Wizards of Morikar use these. There was a deluxe edition of the game system released only in Europe called Advanced Quest, not to be confused with Advanced Hero Quest, which is a totally different game uh, designed by Games Workshop. But, um, oh yeah, Games Workshop. So Citadel Games Workshop, the guys who developed the uh, miniatures for Warhammer Fantasy. Um, Warhammer uh, Fantasy Battle, not RPG, but, well, I guess it's the same. I mean, it's a different product within the same universe, but yeah, they designed uh, these miniatures. And so Advanced Hero Quest is a game that they worked on completely without Milton Bradley at all. Whereas this was a collaboration between Milton Bradley, um, owned by Hasbro, and Games Workshop uh, Citadel. So yeah, Advanced Hero Quest, Advanced Quest, or Advanced Edition included a bunch of these because there was a foldout called The Dark Company, which was a super hard four-part quest. Didn't use four boards, but it used it's like you clear off the board and reset it up, and you get these guys along with the regular miniatures. Then Wizards of Morkar was an expansion only in the EU, and it had these. And there was also um, the North American exclusive Barbarian Quest Pack, Frozen Horror, included a bunch of these guys, but they were gray instead of red. And there's only like half as many of them. So, but these are these are kind of sought after. The other ones that are sought after are the uh, are the ogres, and those come in various colors. But yeah, here's just just an example. So you get a weapon. So you can see those are some hands holding a sword. I haven't cut these out yet, but you just kind of like insert the peg like that. Kind of looks kind of weird, but anyway, you get the idea. So that was Hero Quest. Hero Quest unboxing. It's a pretty fun game. It has a bit of a learning curve, but once you get into it, it's it's hard to get out. Now, if you're used to playing Dungeons and Dragons or some other game like that, uh, you might feel like something's missing. But I like it because it's it's fairly easy to get into. It's you don't have to worry about a lot of calculations and things because everything's right there for you. These are just some extra miniatures I have. So. Here's the European version of the zombie. See, it's got that beveled edge. And it's actually a slight, they're slightly different color sometimes. So I'll show you. Here's a, it's hard to see, but this mummy is actually white. Whereas these are a little bit more yellowish. And then the North American one is really yellow compared to these. So, yep. Got those. This is an ogre from Against the Ogre Horde. Scratch that. This is the one from Against the Ogre Horde. See, it's red. Whereas this one is from the Elf Quest pack, Mage of the Mirror. Same one, it's just, it's kind of a, a bluish gray, a dark, dark bluish gray. And you'll notice that these pieces move. Well, that's because this torso cracks in half and the head comes off and it's semi-posable as a result. It's kind of cool that way. But yeah, these aren't good guys. They just happen to be red. So I picked up a few of these. They were pretty pricey. So 
they would typically run you about 20 bucks a piece. So like buying a, a deluxe large size action figure, except that it's just a little bitty miniature. These are unpainted. So there we go, another one. And then these are black. These are black plastic. And the story behind these, I, I found these on eBay. And from what I understand, when they made the original models, of course, originally they were metal. They were, so they were silver metal. Um, I guess those would be considered the prototypes. And then they, they well, the sculptures, they're like these really large white plastic. They're like this color um, sculptures. Maybe those are the consider the prototypes. I don't know how all that works, but you got the big, pla huge plastic ones and you've got the metal ones. Then you had these, I guess these are like the proofs. Maybe that's the right term, but they were all in black. And when production was over, I guess people just walked off with them or gave them as souvenirs to members of the team or their families. And they ended up at conventions and people sold them. So they're floating around out there. They're presumably as a black version of every single piece out there. But I think they're kind of cool because they add a little more variety. It's like, ooh, what do these guys do? They're... Or you could tell the difference between, uh, let's say you've got multiple heroes that have hired multiple mercenaries and who's who? Well, there's the black ones, there's the gray ones, and the red ones, maybe. Or maybe this ogre is like a good guy that works on your side or something against the other ogres. Who knows? Use your imagination. But anyway, sometimes you'll buy a, a set on eBay or wherever. I keep saying eBay, but I mean, that's that's the primary place you can get stuff. I guess it could be Craigslist or a, a garage sale or whatever. But some of these extras will just be in there. It's like, okay, well, here's a little extra. But these wouldn't have been in the box. So I don't have the other expansions. They're way out of my league, very expensive. Like we're talking three, four, five six seven hundred bucks for complete and if it's in the shrink wrap we're talking thousands so forget it i like hero quest but not enough to spend that kind of money <laughs> you can have fun with what you got without that so thanks for watching thanks for listening like i said we may do another one of these low budget unboxings but this will tell you what's what's in the box what you can expect. And if you're trying to complete your collection, uh, that's pretty much what you get. So thanks again. All right. Bye for now. Stay safe. All right. Welcome once again. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who watched our first live stream of the unboxing of Hero Quest from 1990. And it was the first one. So a little nervous, a little excited, and I totally forgot to uh, do a little bit that was supposed to be included in that original unboxing. So we'll just go ahead and do that now. We talked about, of course, the Milton Bradley uh, Hasbro-owned classic uh, game, tabletop fantasy board game, Hero Quest. And one thing that we forgot was the Chaos Spells. So there were 12 of these Chaos Spell cards. Obviously, the sleeves were not in the original. That's just a modern edition. So you've got these cards, and there are 12 of them. These are for the bad guys. So Zargon's forces, you do run into characters that will have uh, Chaos Magic. Chaos is the source of the bad guy's power. And so you've got these cards here, and I'll just go through them right now. There's 12. Most monsters would not get 12. Maybe they would get one or maybe half a dozen at the most. So you've got Lightning Bolt. That's a pretty nasty one. It does two points of damage to everyone it passes through. Now, heroes don't get to attack each other. Monsters don't get to attack each other. But some spells will take collateral damage, like that one. Zargon doesn't care if his monsters die as long as he wins. Firestorm, same way. So it'll attack everyone in the room, and they basically have to try to roll to see if they can reduce the damage. This is kind of like the Ball of Flame, but much more deadly. Everyone's guaranteed to take one body point of damage, but they could take up to three. We've got those there, and then we've got Tempest. This is just like the Heroes version of Tempest, except it'll 
cause a hero to lose a turn instead of a monster. We've got Cloud of Chaos. This is probably the nastiest spell of all. I think it's worse than um, worse than Firestorm Storm because it will paralyze all the heroes in the room or the corridor. Now they can't move, attack, or defend themselves. So it's as if they've all been put to sleep. Now, of course, they can try to roll to free themselves at once or on a future turn. We always played it so that, okay, they get a chance right away, but then on the next turn they get a chance, they get a chance, they get a chance. And if they're free, that uses up their action. Um, dependent, depends on how you play, though. Some might say, okay, freeing yourself is not an action, then you can do an action and move right away. But if everybody gets paralyzed, the monsters could just go around and just kill them with impunity. So pretty nasty. Command. This was kind of a controversial one uh, back in the day because, okay, Zargon takes control of one of the heroes and can use him as a monster. Well, what exactly can he do when he's commanded? Now, it does say he can move the hero as a monster and attack other heroes. It doesn't say he can use spells. It doesn't say he can use potions. It doesn't say that he can throw his equipment away or do weird stuff, but... I don't know. It's it's kind of up to Zargon, but once you make your decision, you know, try to be fair, but stick to your guns, or you're going to have some angry players on your hands. So there's command, escape. This will allow you to give your bad guy uh, another chance if he can if he can jump out of the way and uh, go to a safe place marked on the quest map. Now, some of these chaos spells, there's different versions of them that appear in other other expansions. But these were included in the North American game system. They were not included in the EU uh, version of the game. Instead, uh, sometimes you would just get a special character and they'd have some special abilities. Just that character gets it. Or you get in the uh, Wizards of Morkar EU expansion where um, each character had their own set of chaos spells. But, but these were for the North American version game system. Uh, fear. So this, uh, again, the hero has a chance to break free for each of his mind points. So, you know, the barbarian only has two mind points. He only gets two chances to, to roll a six. Whereas the wizard, he's got six mind points, so he six chances. Now, if you have the talisman of lore, that'll increase your mind points by one. So you have another chance there. So fear. Rust. This one was nasty. Now it will destroy a helmet or sword, but only a metal helmet or sword. It doesn't, it won't work against artifacts. So if you've got the orc's bane or the spirit blade, it doesn't affect those. It doesn't affect a crossbow or a battle axe because they're not a sword or helmet. But still, you may have spent a lot of gold on that long sword and it's gone. But like the hero spells, these are only used once. Occasionally, they will say that the monster can use a certain spell more than once, but usually it's just a one-shot. Summon Undead. This was this was a fun one back in the day. So the bad guy gets to roll a red die and decide how many of those uh, monsters he can he can draw. Now, when playing as Zargon, usually like y you know you keep these hidden, but when you play the card, you'll play it. Some Zargons will just say, "Okay, look, I've got all these." I'm going to use this, this, and whatever. Whatever you think is, is fair, or you're trying to intimidate the heroes. So summon undeads, good one. Then you've got summon orcs. So there you get different amounts of orcs. Similar concept. you got ball of flame, pretty much like the heroic version. Fire spell, ball of flame, except that it affects a hero instead of a monster up to two damage and then last but not least sleep so this is kind of the weaker version of the cloud of chaos um, notice how the artwork on here is kind of off center sometimes that's just how this the uh, cards were cut out but chaos spells so you've got 12 chaos spells in the game system this is the game system box so just like you have uh, three of each of the other spells um, which I showed in the previous video. So you got your fire, air, water, earth. And then of course you got your treasure cards, which I already showed. 
24 of those, three of each of these, so 12 heroic spells, 12 chaos spells, eight monster cards showing each of the monsters in the game system, and then 10 of the artifact cards for your hero quest game system well that's all for that so just a short little addendum please watch part one to see the full unboxing of this the game system and the two expansions keller's keep and return of the witch lord again these are the north american or u.s versions so the eu version is different if i had that i'd show it to you but i don't have it I'm not that lucky i'm sure someone else can or or has uh, done such a such a video such an unboxing I would like to do another video where I actually talk about this um, this rule book because that is an important part of hero quest so you've got these rules of play this instruction booklet which explains how to play Hero Quest, and it's not that tough. I mean, there's there's 23 pages here of detail, but that'll be its own stream, and so you can enjoy that when that gets posted. Again, once uh, once more, I want to thank everybody who turned in tuned in to listen, to watch. Hope this is helpful information for you and in making a decision if you want to take a jump into the Hero Quest world, uh, maybe compare it to other versions of the game, and we'll see you next time. Stay safe. Thanks a lot.